Eddie Van Halen, perhaps the most recognizable guitar god of all time, wasn't only a master shredder, expert, composer, musical innovator, or instrumental genius. Eddie was the epitome of every guitarist that dreams of selling out arenas all over the world and shredding the guitar as hard as you could. Eddie was the dream of every single guitar player around the world. He was the influence of generations of guitar players, and his influence is still felt today as he stands as one one of the greatest guitar players of all time. In this video, we will be honoring his memory as several contemporaries, idols of Eddie's, and disciples of his alike will share their thoughts and feelings on the one and only Eddie Van Halen. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more great content, as it really helps out the channel. Anyways, let's get into it. Number 10, Brian May. There hadn't been anything so shocking since Jimi Hendrix. I saw uh, Van Halen support Black Sabbath. Tony Iommi was a very good friend even by that time. And the pair of us watched Eddie Van Halen do his stuff and kind of shook our heads and went, whoa. It was just glorious, almost too glorious to take in to see this guy romping around the guitar like a kitten, you know, just running and taking it to places undreamed of. I love his playing, I always will. Number nine, Robbie Krager. Hi, Robbie Krieger here. You know, I'm so sad to hear about Eddie Van Halen's passing last week. And then uh, I remembered that uh, a number of years ago, I was doing a video that my friend uh, Robert Radler was directing, and it was called Turn It Up. It was all about guitars and guitar players. and. So in, in one clip, I, was, uh, I remembered I was doing my version of Eddie Van Halen. And uh, I looked back and I found it. So here it is. It's my tribute to Eddie Van Halen. Rest in peace, man. <laughs> Number eight, Zach Wild. And you know, he he changed the world, man. I mean, really. I mean, you know. So it's just uh, not only with you know how everybody when you know after after Jimi Hendrix, you know, who's basically the Jesus Christ of electric guitar. It's like you can't do anything more. You know, that's the ceiling. You can't do anything more with guitar. And all of a sudden, I always said like if this was a Catholic hierarchy. It, Eddie was the second coming of Christ. You know what I mean? If, if Jimmy was, is the Jesus Christ of guitar, it's like Eddie was the second coming. And it was just like a whole new bag of tricks and all this other stuff. I mean, you know, just like that no one thought was possible. And then, you know, and that, the way he changed amplifiers and everything like that. So, I mean, it's just not only just his playing technique, but down to pickups, tremolo bars, you know, with the Floyd Rose, uh, amplifiers, the way amps are designed, to sort of more high gain and everything like that. So, I mean, he changed everything across the board, not just, you know, just because of his doing taps and everything like that. It just, even the way, you know, 
guitars are made and the way amps are made. He, he changed everything. So, uh, and on top of it is, you know, I mean, he was just a complete package. I mean, aside of the, the playing and the tone, it's just songwriting. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just phenomenal. I mean, just amazing. So I think, and, you know, we're really, truly blessed that we had him till we made it to 65, right? You know, like you really think about it. I mean, it, after those first two records, I mean, after the first record, if he would have retired from music, I mean, he already changed the game. You know what I mean? After the first one, he just pulled a, you know, you, you know, Howard Hughes and just walked away and has never picked up a guitar again. It, it, there's that first album alone with eruption and everything that he did on that record. It just, he, he changed everything. So, um, but, you know, just blessed that we had him around for as long as we did. And he was just really a great guy too. Number seven, Neil Shun. He took Van Halen on their first tour. Funny story, man. I'm going to lay it out here a little bit because I did think about this. Um, it was in 87. Uh, their record was just being released. And I don't know, a couple months, three months prior to the tour starting, uh, I had received a little, you know, red EP, promotional EP that had eruption on it. And you really got me. And so I proceeded to, to put it on my turntable in my bedroom with a guitar and amp and I'm sitting there listening to eruption and I'm going, what the fuck is this guy doing for real? <laughs> I'm like, I could not figure it out where, you know, I'd been listening to Ma Vishnu, all kinds of people, you know, and breaking things down. I could just not figure out what he was doing with the hammer ons. And it, it would like drove me nuts. And we, and then, you know, we finally got out there and got to know Ed and, and watch him night to night just kill it. And all I could say is I, I was very happy not to be following him. Number six, Slash. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard for me to verbally say anything other than I'm just devastated. And, and uh, you know, Eddie was really cool. And I've been talking to him. We've been texting. And I knew he was sick, but I didn't want to ask him how sick he was or, you know, but he was, he was a... Uh, the hospital in LA for a while and I, I knew it was up but uh, I didn't expect that today at all yeah. you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm floored Eddie Eddie changed guitar playing when I mean I, I picked up the guitar and I guess it was uh, 1979 1980 the first Van Halen record came out and Steven Adler which is Guns N' Roses original drummer when we were kids used to just hang out and did school and go to the pizza place and whatnot and I, we used to listen to that, that first Van Halen record, and it was just insane. It was like, what the <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, and he just, he, he changed guitar playing, but he was such an amazing musician, amazing guitar player, amazing innovator, and just a hell of a guy. And, and you know, we're, we really lost a major contributor to rock and roll today. Number five, Kirk Hammett. Eddie Van Halen was amazing. Not since Jimi Hendrix had there been a guitar player that had so much impact and was so inspiring to me. He just explored the most simplest thing, a harmonic on a string, and brought it into this realm of technique that no one even thought was possible. He was just like from a different planet. Number four, Joe Bonamassa. Well, you know, I had run into Eddie a few times um, when he was getting treatment um, in Germany. And we all kind of knew he was ill. We didn't know how, you know, how advanced it was. They kept it pretty quiet. Um, but, you know, I mean, on Eddie's legacy, um, the best way I could describe it is there's only a handful of guitar players, Jimi Hendrix, Django Reinhardt, um, there's a handful that you can quantify with pre and post. Pre-West Montgomery, post-West Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Everybody played jazz differently. Pre-Django Reinhardt, post-Django Reinhardt. Everybody played gypsy jazz differently. Andre Segovia, Jimi Hendrix, pre-post. The same thing goes with Eddie Van Halen is is pre Eddie Van Halen you had you had a great group of players that were out in the 70s you know 
um, in the rock side, you had Alan Holsworth was already out. Um, you know, you had, you know, uh, like Dee Miola was playing and, and all that. And, and Bill Nelson from Bebop Deluxe and, you know, Tommy Bolin, obviously, mm -hmm. um, Richie Blackmore. There's great rock guitar pre-Eddie Van Halen. Post Eddie Van Halen, everybody played, a, played a, a, an instrument derived of a super strap. He changed the game. He changed the game for everybody. And that's the best way you could describe his legacy. And there's only a few guitar players like that, that, that are pre and post. And, and he's one of them. And, and it's, you know, it's a sad loss for the guitar community because you never think in your lifetime, you're like, there's going to be a world without Eddie Van Halen. That's, that's crazy talk, you know, but, um, you know, he lived a good life. He died way too young. Um, and, you know, you know, Godspeed. He's a, you know, he was always nice to me and very, very, very cool cat. Number three, Joe Satriani. Eddie was uh, such a wonderful uh, compositional improviser, and uh, he was obviously a really great composer on the guitar. You know, he figured out a way to write these really fun songs, but they were really groundbreaking in how he arranged his guitar parts. Um, you know, this, you can hardly find any songs where he's strumming and then overdubbing some other part, you know, it's a very different way of playing. He's in a trio and he's, he's trying to fill up the space with a kind of a orchestral style of playing. Um, and then of course, when he goes to solo, we know from his interviews that he improvised and he tried to capture the spirit of what, of, uh, of the song and of the band, I guess, of the live event, which is a, which is a whole kind of, style in itself you know it's very very different than you know like a pink floyd you know the way david gilmore would would approach a song um all equally valid but uh uniquely different and the the odd thing about eddie is that sometimes he would play stuff that didn't make any musical sense but made sense in terms of how how much fun it was to listen to you know when you heard the whole band you went oh that's so much fun but if you go back and let's say you learn it note for note, you go, that doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, there are no rules in music. There's just cause and effect. That's really what it is. And I think he understood that more than most people. He would never get held back by any kind of preconception that there was a rule, you know, that stopped you from doing this chord or that note or whatever. He just went with what felt right and what sounded right. And his sense of timing was, like probably the best I'd heard in decades. When he came along, I was like, wow, that, that guy's got a right hand of doom. <laughs> Number two, Tony Iommi. Well, the thing was, you see, we, 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 we had opening acts. We didn't pick opening acts that, that we'd say, oh, we're better than them, or we'll do this and we'll do that. We wanted a, a good show. We wanted to make it a good show. So, so and it happened that Van Halen made it a great show. They were really up and like, we were like sort of a bit dinosaur -y by that point, you know, and they were all new on the block and, and come out and very energetic and, and offered something different, you know, the way, certainly the way Eddie played, it, came, it was it, 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 a whole new way of playing. And it was great. And we got on really great with them. And I used to have Eddie back in my room quite a lot. We used to be talking about guitars and this and that. We had a, we had a great time and I, he's still one of my dear friends. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was, they were good. They were bloody good and they deserved to get, you could tell they were going to get somewhere. Number one, Steve Vai. Vai's contribution to David Lee Roth's sound and success is evident. Inspired by competition with Eddie Van Halen, maybe? No, you see, I've been going through that my whole life, you know, from even from the Zappa days when um, it was, you know, uh, Adrian Ballou was in the band and I took his place, or Warren Cucurullo, and then um, Alcatraz with Ingve, and then uh, David Lee Roth with Eddie Van Halen, and, and then, you know, um, Whitesnake. Now, I can't really be bothered by, by that. I would be miserable. I would never be able to do my job. You know, I mean, I've never, I would be so apprehensive. Can you imagine? Edward Van Halen? I mean, he's one of my favorite guitar players. He's fantastic. You know, what he's done for the guitar. I would never try to diminish that. And I would never try to compete with it. I just do what I do. And kids will pick up on that. And they'll just know that 
within 10 minutes, you know, this is what this guy does and that's what this guy does. I get my best results that way, you know. I'm always trying to better myself as a musician. When somebody comes along who is capable of doing things beyond what I can do, or I just find it as an inspiration, you know. I would be a fool if I competed with the people who I uh, have replaced. <laughs> And there it is. Did you enjoy the video? Was there anything said that surprised you or maybe you didn't know? Have you ever seen Van Halen live or any of the other guitarists in the video? What's your favorite Van Halen tune? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, share, or subscribe as it really helps out the channel significantly. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Rock on.